Chapter 1381 Silent Deadlight When Hansen saw the beam, it was too late for him to dodge. Instead, he threw his fist at it. Boom. An overwhelming force of power sent Hansen spiraling into the cave wall, causing it to collapse and bury him. He lost his grip on the star sea orb as this happened, resulting in him dropping it. The woman picked it up, frowned, and said, This man's life force is strange. The dog responded, saying, It's too late to say that. After my laser, he is practically dead. I suppose. He was not needed, anyway. The woman and her canine companion then left, as swiftly and as silently as they had arrived. The dog, following her closely from behind, said, Well, we can't say it was a wasted trip. It's a remarkable thing, getting our hands on a gemstone Geno core. Yourself Geno core just reached gemstone class, didn't it? Now you've got another one. You're a very lucky person, if I might say so, milady. It's only a gemstone Geno core. Yes, but you got it yourself. You worked for it. That is far better than being gifted one, as you were given by the master of sacred shelter. A hand shot out through a mound of rocks and rubble. Within the haze and mist that cloaked it, a light began to shine, brighter than the midday sun. The beam must have been the power of a sacred blood creature, and what's more, it had the power of silence, which could kill a person in an instant. Without Super King Spirit, he would have died. Hansen examined the empty cave he was now standing in. He was bitter at what had transpired, and while gritting his teeth, he vowed to take revenge on the people who had done this to him. They were strong. Too strong. I need to hurry up and max out my mutant geno points quickly. That'd be the least I need, if I hope to take out that dog. Sacred shelter is what they said, wasn't it? Oh, I'll remember that. They're going to regret making an enemy out of me. Hansen was suffering a mixture of emotions right now, all tanged with negativity. He turned around, however, and then saw something. Where the dog's laser had blasted, another cave had been revealed. That cave was incredibly bright and the shining lights dispersed the dusty haze that choked most of the cave. Inside there, Hansen saw an egg that was around one meter in size. It seemed to have been decorated by a number of stars. Oh, well, it looks like I might not be walking away empty-handed, after all. Is that a star sea beast egg? Hansen's pain had been alleviated somewhat, and so he limped over to examine it with greater clarity. A gemstone geno core was a fine thing to find, but it wouldn't do anything to increase his genes. That egg, however, might be able to increase his geno points. Hansen quickly took out his horn and put it to the shell, ready to drill a hole inside. With all his strength, Hansen began drilling a hole with his horn so he could help himself to a big suck. The shell was thicker than expected, though, and a flurry of sparks flew dangerously close to his now squinting eyes. A while later, he noticed he had managed to bore a small hole in the eggshell. Thinking he might have gone through, Hansen planted his lips firmly on it, thinking he could suck the contents out. Unfortunately, he had not drilled in deep enough, and no sweet, yolk wine nectar was available to be tasted. So, Hansen swapped his lips for an eye. He tried to get a look at whatever was inside, but he was unable to see. So, with his hands, Hansen tried to fit his fingers in the hole and dig away more of the shell manually. Half an hour later, the hole had become the size of a ping pong ball. He tried using his horn again, but after a few more drill sessions, the egg suddenly shattered. There was no juice inside, but there was a small three-horned dinosaur. It had three horns and it was blue. The three horns looked as if they had been made out of crystal, tinted the color of the night sky. Lights twinkled inside, as if they were a reflection of the sparkling cosmos. This has to be the baby of the star sea beast, yes? It must be. A baby would provide more genes than the undeveloped yolk would that much was for certain. Hansen was going to grab it and take it with him, regardless of whether it was alive or dead. The thing had its eyes shut, so now was the best time. But that quickly changed when Hansen leaned down to grab it. The eyes opened, and in an ever-cute newborn immediacy, it jumped up and began to waddle around. Hansen thought of dubbing it a galaxy beast, in reference to its gorgeous horns. He also thought naming it was silly, since he was already planning to make it his supper. And when he reached his arms down, ready to throttle it to death, the baby creature saw it as a sign of affection. Then, it leaped into his arms. Hansen was surprised to see this. He thought he'd have to fight the creature if he wished to get it. But he wasn't a complete sucker for cute creatures, 
and as he stared into its mesmerizingly beautiful blue eyes, it began licking his face affectionately. If you lick me again, I'll kill you, Hansen said, as he put the creature down. Galaxy Beast dropped onto its bum and stared at Hansen, who towered above it. This is a great opportunity to get sacred blood geno points. I hope you know that. So forgive me for this, and don't take it to be anything personal, Hansen said, as he raised the horn up high, primed to strike. Survival of the fittest. The strong survive, the weak die a horrible death unfairly. In the next life, become a lady. Folks like me might treat you better. Hansen then launched his arm towards the creature, putting all his strength into the strike. Galaxy Beast remained still, curious what Hansen was doing. It was as innocent as could be. I, I, Hansen beat the creature with his horn a number of times, but it remained unfazed. Chapter 1382 Small Galaxy Beast I, have to be cruel here. I need power to kill that mangy mutt, but this thing must have the ability to soften the will of an enemy. Hansen picked the creature up, and it resumed trying to lick his face, as it had earlier. It was an adorable thing, truth be told, so he forcefully turned it away to keep its puppy dog eyes from working their wizardry and softening his resolve. I am a man. A shining example of a man. This? This is just a creature. It's food. Hansen raised his spare hand high, horn glinting in the faint light of the cavern. He was ready to bring it down on the little thing hard. But as much as he wanted to do it, Something in him resisted when the time came to bring it down. He raised his hand, but then brought it down. He raised his hand, but then brought it down. This went on for quite some time, and each time he failed to do the deed, he cursed himself harder. Galaxy Beast, hearing Hansen muttering sour words under his breath, squirmed in his hand to turn around. It looked directly into Hansen's eyes and tilted its head, wondering what was going on. You are a sacred blood creature. Can't you look the part? Show me your teeth or something, Hansen pleaded, knowing he couldn't bring himself to slay such a cute creature. Galaxy Beast then sunk its head below its shoulders. It winced and its eyes flickered, as if it was on the verge of crying. Stop that. Quit this cute nonsense. Act like a sacred blood creature. Come on, try and rip my throat out. That's what you really want to do, isn't it? Isn't it? Hansen's pleading was about to reach frothing at the mouth levels. A second later, though, Galaxy Beast levee broke, and a flood of tears erupted. Fine. Whatever. Stop crying. You're going to make a scene. What? What might the trees think of me, huh? Hansen had now silently admitted to himself he wouldn't be able to do it. He just couldn't, and that was who he was. Hansen patted the little creature's head softly to comfort it. Almost immediately, the tears stopped. Then, with its sticky tongue, Galaxy Beast began to lick Hansen's hand jovially. Fine. You want a job? You can be a part of my guard, okay? If you can bark ferociously enough, that'll do. Baby steps. I will expect more of you in the future, but you've only been alive for five minutes, so I'll give you the benefit of the doubt for now. Hansen tried to give it his best father voice. Galaxy Beast crawled along Hansen's arms and then perched itself on his shoulder, as things tended to do. Then, it licked his face again. Hey, what did I say? Not the face you'll give me pimples. As Hansen said this, though, he noticed something. He was feeling better. He was actually healing with each sloppy lick. Then, all of a sudden, Galaxy Beast spat out another star sea orb. It hovered for a while, but then dropped into a cubicle of water that enveloped Han Sr. Shortly after, Hansen's body was fully healed. Drool or not, that's impressive. A water and healing elemental combo? Nice. Exchanging the orb for this little creature was now looking like a worthy swap. Hansen deactivated his Super King Spirit mode and decided to return home. Oh, that mud is going to get what's coming. That woman, too. Ugh, what a despicable hag, Hansen told himself. People didn't often get the better of him, but when they did, it really stung. He had heard them speak of a place called Sacred Shelter, so Hansen fancied asking around about it. Intel was the first thing he needed. Before plotting his revenge, he discovered that Sacred Shelter was a super shelter, unfortunately. The master of it was a super creature by the name of Skylord. It looks like that woman is rather high tier. Typical. Picking bones with the biggins already. Whatever the case may be, it looks like I might need more than just mutant geno points to settle this feud. Hansen spent much time deliberating how he might serve his favorite cold dish. 
Hanston was bitter to his very core. Things like this didn't happen to him. Things like this shouldn't happen to him. Him, of all people. He was going to do everything in his power to settle the score. Leveling up was the number one task on his agenda, to begin with. And he started by maxing out his primitive geno points. When the woman and the dog saw Hansen, he was in super king spirit mode. The next time they met, his attackers wouldn't recognize him as the person they assaulted in the wilds. Moment Queen came to tell Hansen they had collected 1,000 genes and that he could visit the Geno Core storage. Hansen wished to check it out first and spend some time there. He wasn't sure if the woman and her dog were in the vicinity, and if he was out and about outside the shelter, he feared he might encounter them too soon. The Geno Core storage access point looked very similar to a teleportation device. However, it wasn't mechanical or electrical and neither were there any fancy tools or strange screens that offered technical readings that meant pretty much nothing. There were a number of neon patterns and designs adoring it, though. In the center was a stone plate. There was a word etched on its center, but Hansen did not know what it meant. Hansen stepped on it, thinking about which geno core he should use first. You could not use the ones found in the field, as they weren't self-geno core. You had to use a core produced by your own body. Most people would only ever have one self geno core, but Hansen had already obtained two. I'll try the crystal egg. Hansen, more than anything, just wanted to see what the place looked like. After summoning the crystal egg, the strange word came to life like a hologram around him. A second later, Hansen found himself standing before a big tablet on which a lengthy message was scrawled. Hansen found himself unable to read what was written, but he felt as if he understood it, regardless. It was a leaderboard, and it told him the names of the top 100 bronze Geno cores he could expect to find. Number three was called Heartwheel, he noticed. There was also something else written beside it as an addendum. It said Sacred Shelter. Chapter 1383, Geno Core Test. It wasn't just the one in third place, either. Hansen looked at the top 100 and noticed many of the Geno cores there were from Sacred Shelter, too. It proved it was a strong place, indeed. There were still a lot of Geno cores without the additional text, so Hansen wondered if they belonged to Sacred Shelter as well. As Hansen surveyed the ranking list, a man made of stone began to move. He spoke to Hansen, saying, Welcome to the Geno core storage. Your rank is 100 million behind. Would you like to conduct a test? Who are you? Hansen looked at Rockman. I am Geno core storage. Geno core storage is me. You may treat me like a Geno core, Rockman explained. Are you saying the Geno Core storage is a special Geno Core? Hansen frowned. Yes, Rockman answered. Then who owns this Geno Core? Hansen asked. Rockman spoke with a monotone voice and said, The Fourth God Sanctuary. Hansen proceeded to ask a few more questions, and he ended up learning quite a bit about the Geno Core storage. After that, he agreed to start the test. In the Geno Core storage, you did not have to fight for every rank. The test would give you a rank depending on the Geno Core's own performance, and the rank would move up and down in accordance to its power. A hundred million, ten million, one million, one hundred thousand, ten thousand, one thousand, one hundred, top ten, and number one. Every bracket, or rank, you reached, your Geno Core would be reinforced. It made your Geno Core stronger, but it did not shift its level to a higher tier like from bronze to silver. Hansen wanted to earn the number one spot so he could earn nine reinforcements for his Geno Core and then move up to the Silver Geno Core storage. If he did this every time, he would always find himself stronger than those who did not reinforce their Geno Cores. But being number one, out of the hundreds of millions vying for the same title, was no small feat. Fortunately, the Geno Core storage battles were not entirely dependent on the Geno Cores. It also depended on the Master and their proficiency in combat. Even if the crystal egg wasn't the best, he could use his own powers to reach the first place. Hansen gave the crystal egg to Rockman. Then, Rockman opened his third eye and shined a light on the egg. As it shone, Rockman's eyes displayed numbers. It looked like a slot machine. Hansen watched the numbers go from a very high amount to a much shorter amount. The crystal egg's powers was good, but its shortcomings were not difficult to discern. He believed it could reach the 10,000 bracket, though. The crystal egg could not deal damage, so its ranking could be low. Regardless, it wouldn't bother him too much if that turned out to be the case. As the numbers shown by Rockman reduced, Hansen was quickly given a shock. 
Wow, it reached the four-digit range. It's less than 10,000 now, and it keeps going smaller. Is the crystal egg really that strong? Hansen could not believe his eyes then, when he saw it breach the three-digit range later on. The crystal egg did not deal damage. Sometimes it was useful, but Hansen did not think it was worthy of being deemed that strong. When the numbers reached two digits, Hansen started to think there may have been a problem with the test. The crystal egg had major flaws, and he found it rather difficult to believe it had reached the top 100. The numbers in Rockman's eyes continued to descend. Every time they moved, Hansen's heart jumped. This was crazy. It was as if he was dreaming. And eventually, Rockman's eyes displayed the number one and the number zero. His heart was going to leap out of his chest. The crystal egg had reached the top 10. That meant it had already earned eight reinforcements right off the bat. He thought he'd have to fight it for a long time to reach this point, and he never thought the sky would drop a big biscuit that would allow him to skip all that battling. What was even crazier was that, after reaching one and zero, Rockman's eyes closed. The numbers disappeared. The third eye that shot out the illuminating light displayed the number nine. And it didn't stay still. No way it's still going on. This must be fake. The crystal egg cannot be this strong. Hansen's eyeballs almost fell from their sockets. The numbers shown by the third eye was like a joke, continuing to go down. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. No. My heart. Hansen clutched his chest. The test had far exceeded his wildest expectations. He stared at the numbers intently. When the eye reached the figure of one, time stood still. Hansen was delighted the crystal egg had reached the first place out of all the bronze geno cores that existed. Is it really that strong? Hansen wondered, but he thought to himself, was it because of the liquid the black crystal released when the egg was created? But the crystal egg just doesn't feel like the sort of geno core that could be considered the best. Regardless, I like it. As Hansen thought of this, Rockman said, the test has finished. The crystal core in bronze geno core storage has reached the first rank. It will show up on the bronze geno core storage leaderboard. Would you like to display the name of the shelter? No, Hansen exclaimed. If anyone discovered the number one spot had been taken by a nameless gold shelter, the super creatures and emperors would be paying him an unfriendly visit in no time. Geno cores could be leveled up, and reaching such a high rank in the bronze geno core storage would draw a lot of attention his way. Especially for the crystal egg. It hadn't fought at all and it reached the first place through a simple test. It was far too shocking, and it had undoubtedly rocked the entirety of the fourth god sanctuary. Chapter 1384 Overpowered Genocore Black Mountain God, why do you insist on bothering me? Would it not be better to challenge real demon, instead? Inside Genocore storage, an elegant spirit was speaking to a creature with black wings. My heart will will destroy your king bell and claim its rightful place atop the leaderboard. Black Mountain God said. My bell is soon to become a silver geno core, and when it does, real demon will be crowned number one. So, why don't you just stop pestering me for once and go challenge him? God King said. But I want to beat you before you obtain a silver geno core. You are my nemesis, don't you see? Black Mountain God pleaded. God King snorted and said, But I have already defeated you 100 times in a row. Aren't you tired of this yet? Black Mountain God answered. This time I really won't lose. Black Mountain God summoned a Geno Core that looked very much like a wheel. Then, he spun it towards God King. For as long as I am here, you will never claim first place. God King summoned a big bell above Black Mountain God's head. The battleground rumbled and roared with the surging of frightening powers. As this occurred, the leaderboard tablet outside their combat began to shine brightly. King Bell had descended a rank, and in first place was now written, crystal core. The fight between the two came to a swift end. They both stood absolutely still, staring at the leaderboard in disbelief. To whom does that Geno core belong? They both asked at the same time. They had never heard the name before, and all of a sudden, it had usurped the first position atop the leaderboard. And they knew for a fact that God King had not lost a single fight to anyone. This meant it had reached first place immediately after entering the Geno core storage. Their shocked faces soon turned sour. They thought the idea that a Geno core had reached first place without even fighting was preposterous. When God King conducted the test on his arrival, he managed to gain a place in the top 100. That was a remarkable achievement, at the time, 
and even he had to fight tooth and nail against a number of opponents to climb upwards to the top. Each fight was a ghastly trial and a half. This was the case for everyone, though, pretty much. No one had ever heard of a Genocore that allowed its wielder to skip directly to first place. What kind of Genocore could that be, anyway? Black Mountain God's tone was starting to seethe with bitter contempt. He could hardly face looking at the leaderboard now. He had toiled hard with the dream of getting to first place, putting in an incredible amount of effort every day. Yet, despite all his work and hard-fought battles, he had yet to beat God King. It hurt him to see someone easily achieve first place, without so much as lifting a finger. God King's King Bell had been reinforced nine times. First place did not mean too much to him, but it still made him a little sick to think of what had just happened. And he felt worse for Black Mountain God, who he knew had tried so hard. For a Geno Core to show up and immediately knock him off his throne, he could hardly imagine what power it must possess. Everyone in the Geno Core storage was shocked, seeing it appear at the top of the leaderboard. Did King Bell become a silver Geno Core? No, it's in second place now. Are you blind? Oh, yeah, you're right. But what kind of power can overcome King Bell? I don't think it beat King Bell. Then how does that work? How could the new Geno Core reach first place without beating King Bell? I know every Geno Core that is featured on that leaderboard, trust me. But that new Geno Core? I've never seen it before. That is brand. Spanking new. If that is the case, how did it reach the top of the leaderboard? Are you stupid? Seriously, don't you know anything? It was crowned first place after spawning, through the whole testing thing they conduct. Is such a thing even possible? I didn't think so, but that's the only semi-plausible scenario I can think of. Whoa. So if what you're saying is the truth, how powerful must that crystal core truly be? I bet it belongs to a super creature or the son of some emperor or something. Surely, even if a super creature had generated this Geno core, it would not be possible to achieve such power. If this is legit, it's a little unfair, don't you think? It is crazy. What manner of life form can achieve such a feat? The Crystal Core's appearance on the top of the leaderboard had shaken the entire Fourth God Sanctuary. Even the creatures with maxed out Geno Cores were shocked. This was a truly remarkable occurrence. Go and find out who owns this Geno Core and find out what it does. The owners of most large shelters began issuing such commands to their subordinates. Although it was only a bronze Geno Core, it was the sign of a rising power they would soon need to be wary of. There was an extraordinary talent there one they would do well to learn about. Those tasked with discovering Hansen's identity were usually operating on the basis of either one of two primary objectives. Either their master wanted to exterminate the owner of Crystal Egg before they became too strong, or form an alliance with Hansen in anticipation of his future strength. Of course, every attempt to find him was just a stab in the dark. The name of the owner was not listed, and neither was the shelter it belonged to. Still, the term Crystal Core was on the tip of everyone's tongue throughout the Fourth God Sanctuary. Quite strange, when you take into account the fact that nobody even knew what it did. Chapter 1385, First Geno Core Battle Hansen watched as his Geno Core was being reinforced. Each beam of light was a reinforcement, and after nine such beams, the process was finished. Immediately, Hansen could tell the egg had become much stronger. When Rockman finished, Hansen took the egg back into his possession. Its shape was very much the same, but it featured a prismatic glow in its interior. It shone with nine separate colors. It could make for a stunningly pretty gemstone. It looks like my genes and skills are just 2D asterisk M in good. The Geno core that I created took first place. Ha! Huh. Was there any doubt who was the best? I'm not even sure why I was surprised. Hansen had let it go to his head a little. Hansen thought the black crystal must have helped somewhat, but he firmly believed it was primarily a product of his own body. Although it had been reinforced nine times, however, the egg still couldn't kill creatures outright. It couldn't even inflict the minor damage. It did make Hansen wonder how it could be worthy of so simply securing first place. With his goal of becoming number one complete so soon, Hansen was a little at a loss on what he should do next. If the crystal core secured the number one position, the bulwark umbrella can't be very far behind, can it? It saved my life more than the egg has, after all. Hansen wondered what the result might be for that. But he wasn't keen on testing that out just yet. And that aside, he needed to accept a challenge first. If Hansen had not entered, 
he wouldn't have to comply with the Geno Core storage's quota. Now that he had entered, however, he was required to fight at least once a month to maintain his position. If he lost the fight, his nine reinforcements would still be in place. But if he did not comply with the once a month quota and didn't show up to battle a challenger, the reinforcements would be wiped and he'd have to start all over without the benefit of a test skip. So, no matter what, Hansen had to make Shadow Shelter work and keep it operational so he could fight at least once a month in the Geno Core storage. Not all Geno Cores could challenge him, however. Only Cores within one level of his own could challenge. And since the Crystal Core was number one, the challengers who could fight him had to be within the 1 to 10 bracket. Although it was only a once a month thing, Hansen was eventually going to enter his Bulwark umbrella as well, and the same requirements would apply to that. But they stacked and that meant Hansen would have to battle twice a month. Furthermore, Hansen would eventually formulate a Geno core for the Blood Pulse Sutra and his Super King Spirit. While that would mean he would have to fight four times a month, that wasn't where his biggest issue lay. Rather, it would make hiding his identity a struggle. As Hansen mulled this over, Rockman suddenly spoke to him. He said, King Bell of the second rank wishes to challenge you. Hartwheel of the fourth rank wishes to challenge you. Hansen was told that at least seven others wished to challenge him. None of them were too concerned with becoming first place. Rather, they just wanted to know what power the elusive Crystal Core wielded. Aside from Real Demon and the combatant at number nine, the top ten had all requested a battle with Hans. Senator Hansen viewed the list of competitors and pondered which he should fight first. It wasn't as if he could avoid the fight, either. If he didn't fight, his reinforcements would be removed and he'd be back to where he started. He wasn't afraid, though. Hansen had a lot of confidence in himself, and he didn't think any one of the bronze Geno Core tier could defeat him. Even if he had to battle the son of an emperor who had a bronze Geno Core, Hansen wouldn't be afraid. He had what it took. But even Hansen himself wished to test out the powers of the Crystal Core now. It had improved a great deal, but what those improvements were, he wouldn't have a clue until he tested it in battle. So, Hansen decided on accepting the challenge from Hartwheel. He was the highest rank of the members that came from Sacred Shelter. Hansen was still pining for revenge over what had transpired in Hidden Valley. He wasn't going to waste a single opportunity to exact vengeance on the people that occupied that wretched place. He was out for blood. Of course, Hansen did not wish to expose his identity. If they learned who he was and came after him, Shadow Shelter would be destroyed in no time. Hmm, it would be best if I hid my identity. Hansen donned a set of armor and removed any pieces of apparel or clothing that might give away his identity. Challenge declined. Desired opponent has accepted another challenge. God King was disappointed, hearing this. Black Mountain God had a different reaction, however, for he heard his rockman say, Challenge accepted. Desired opponent has accepted your challenge request. The bronze Geno Core tablet then warped itself to form a black hole of sorts. It was a tunnel that would lead the opponents to their designated fighting grounds. Black Mountain God flapped his black wings and did not hesitate a second before flying through the tunnel. Upon arrival, Black Mountain God examined the place of battle. It was an ancient city, half buried amidst the desert. An aura of mystique and secrecy permeated the atmosphere of that place, hinting at a wild and untold history that lay buried beneath its sands. The powers of Geno Cores were all different, so the battlegrounds changed to suit the challengers and avoid providing any environmental hindrances to the course. Black Mountain God then saw his opponent emerge from another black void tunnel. He locked him in his sights. Chapter 1386, Crystal Core Mutant Black Mountain God frowned upon seeing his enemy. All he could see was a black shadow, and he could not even make out his opponent's face. Hansen had also used Dongshan Aura to hide his entire body, since it had reached that level. He could be properly seen if his opponent was considerably stronger than he was. And just in case that didn't work, he was clad in armor. There was always the chance his enemy had a Geno Core that could boost their eyesight, so he made sure to wear armor in the event that might happen. My name is Black Mountain God. I hail from Sacred Shelter. Tell me, what is your name? Black Mountain God was unable to see his opponent's face, and neither could he tell whether the shadow was a spirit or creature. The fact that he might be a human did not even cross Black Mountain God's mind. He wanted to be number one more than anything, and he wasn't really interested in who his enemy was. Unfortunately, 
Sacred Shelter had told him to do what he could to unmask this new rival, and so, he had to at least ask. Hansen threw the crystal egg towards his opponent. It barreled through the air, spinning like a bullet as it went. Black Mountain God was surprised, to say the least. He wasn't expecting such haste from his enemy, and with the number one Geno core coming right for him, he swiftly summoned his heart wheel. He was a creature, too. If he died then and there, he died then and there. The heart wheel's radius of yellow light was wide, and in that light, the crystal core was frozen stiff. They were both shocked, seeing the egg get stopped still like that. They were both expecting more from the number one Geno core. Black Mountain God was especially surprised for this, whereas Hansen was disheartened more than anything. He expected a finer performance, considering it had been reinforced nine times. Black Mountain God could not believe it was practically over already. He cast his heart wheel with even greater strength, confident he had stopped the egg for good. Heart wheel was one of the best bronze Geno cores in the sanctuary, and under the light it emitted, the crystal core began to melt. How did I become number one with such a garbage Geno core? Hansen now knew he'd have to get his hands dirty if he wanted to win. Black Mountain God couldn't believe he had destroyed the Geno core with the power of his heart wheel. Was that a Geno core storage error? Or am I just fortunate enough to wield something that strikes the crystal core's weak spot? Black Mountain God then took off into the air. He had a spring in his step, and he wished to melt the egg as much as he could and reduce it to nothing but dust in the wind. The shell was half melted as this occurred. With the light continuing to increase in volume, it wouldn't last. It was sure to be game over very soon. Hansen wanted to attack Black Mountain God and stop what the heart wheel was doing. There, he could use his full power and he was still confident he could beat down the winged wretch. Hansen had come here for revenge, after all. He wasn't going to lose again to a crony of sacred shelter, and on top of that, grant them first place on the leaderboard. But then, Hansen suddenly felt as if his crystal core was exuding a strange power only he could feel. Hansen was shocked, and watching his melting egg continued to fill him with a strange sensation. He thought to himself, the crystal core looks like an egg, and I've even been referring to it as an egg, for the most part. What if it actually is an egg? What if there's something inside it? Hansen could sense it becoming stronger, so he stopped going after Black Mountain God and just stared at the crystal core. Black Mountain God had no clue what was happening, but he believed it to be something swell. He was thrilled with himself, and he giddily cackled, Pa, this is the first rank Geno core? Today is the day I become number one, for I am going to utterly annihilate this thing. Waha. Hansen stood atop a decaying, sand-worn tower, watching his precious egg melt. It was the shell that was melting, and Hansen could now most certainly tell there was something powerful residing inside it. Katcha. The eggshell finally began to collapse, and from the spots where parts of the shell had fallen to the ground, intense beams of light were shining upwards. What's going on? Is something changing? Did I get ahead of myself? Black Mountain God frowned but he was still fairly certain in his ability to beat it. The Geno core had been sitting in the light for the longest time. It was like an ant under a magnifying glass, and he knew it should have been destroyed by now. There was definitely something amiss. Black Mountain God then exerted even more power and strength to destroy the egg. He wanted it gone for good, just in case something else was to happen. More of the shell began to crumble into nothing beneath that light, and the entire composition of it became thinner. But eventually, Black Mountain God got his wish. The egg had entirely crumbled into nothing of note, and it simply looked like the trampled egg of some forgotten creature in the sand. The two combatants looked at the broken egg and noticed a jade-like item residing inside it. Strangely, it had no color. Hansen was shocked, seeing his egg now appear like so. The item inside was a skeleton, but it seemed composed, unlike the rest of the egg. It almost looked like a Buddha, legs crossed in lotus pose. However, it exuded a strange aura, one that was equal parts holiness and genuine evil. Hansen was surprised seeing this, and he thought to himself, did it break too soon? Was it supposed to be a Buddha, but only its skeleton has been left behind due to the light? Chapter 1387, Jade Skeleton Black Mountain God could not detect the power that resided within that jade skeleton. Still, he knew he had to be cautious because it was the number one Geno core he was dealing with. Black Mountain God cast heart will to further break the tattered remains of the egg and the skeleton within. Strangely, the searing light seemed to have no effect on it anymore. Instead, it just imbued the skeleton with what looked like a radiant coat of gold paint. 
It almost made the thing look holy. Something flickered in the jade skeleton's empty sockets, and they lit up like the slow rev of an old CRT television warming up. The skeleton then possessed a pair of eyes, ones that seemed to have been wrought with ice. Catcha! Catcha! The skeleton began to move, with a number of xylophonic sounds singing from its creaking joints. The skeleton was small, like a little pygmy, but it seemed so alive, like a genuine creature of its own. There were subtleties to its movement, and there was detail to its physique. Beneath that light, the skeleton began to skitter across the heated sand dunes towards Black Mountain God. The jade skeleton was rushing, with its little legs hastily leaving a small ant-like trail across the sand. Black Mountain God recalled the heart wheel and watched the pygmy approach. He had no idea what to expect from the little skeletal being, but he knew he'd rather risk breaking his heart wheel than risk himself being killed. Pang. Hansen watched the pygmy hit the heart wheel. The heart wheel did not break and after the strike, the pygmy simply pulled its fist back. Then, the eyes of the hollow being turned dim and eerie. Is that it? Black Mountain God cackled, thinking he had seen all the ominous egg had to offer. He wanted to use his heart wheel to attack next, but he suddenly realized he had lost all control. He looked to the far end of the heart wheel, where the pygmy had touched, and noticed it turning dice. The biting cold quickly webbed its way across the weapon until the entire thing was layered with solid and unbreakable ice. The heart wheel then lost all of its power and dropped into the sand below. Blurk. Black Mountain God spat out some blood and felt a pain in his chest as if a scalpel had just been slashed across his heart. Black Mountain God knew this feeling, for it had once occurred in the past, the last time his heart wheel was destroyed. But the heart wheel was still present, and the fact that he was feeling this damage confused him. In battle, if a Geno core was destroyed, the fight would automatically end. There was a systematic, forced retreat put upon the combatants. But since Black Mountain God was still there, that meant the core was still there, too. It had just been rendered out of service. Suddenly, the pygmy's master appeared before Black Mountain God. Hansen swung his fist towards the bewildered creature, for a being such as that was sure to want revenge one day. He couldn't be allowed to live. Hansen was not going to hold back and he wasn't going to show any mercy. He'd never show it to any being who pledged allegiance to sacred shelter. He was going to super spank him. Black Mountain God could forfeit the fight and bail whenever he wished to, but Hansen had taken advantage of its confusion. And now, he had one chance to end things, one little chance he could not let escape. If you touch me, sacred will hunt you down, Black Mountain God said. He realized it was too late for him to escape, so pleading a few words was the only thing he could do. Let them come. I relish the challenge. After that, Hansen let fly his fist. Black Mountain God threw his own fist to strike back, but when the two connected, the wretch was given a shock. The winged felon felt as if it was now composed of one long, winding thread. And now, that thread was coming undone. One string, one thread, began to unravel his entire existence. Before he could even let out a scream, he shattered and became one with the sand of the arena. Super Spank was far too cruel. Even though Black Mountain God was incredibly strong, he did not have the necessary power to repel the mighty strike that had become a hallmark of Han Sr. Super Creature Baby Black Mountain God killed. No be soul gained, and the bronze Geno Core Heart Wheel has been sealed. This creature is unavailable for consumption. Hansen heard the announcement play, and although it was a super creature, he only just realized it was a baby. He hoped he hadn't infuriated its mother. After Hansen killed the fiend, the jade skeleton unleashed a strange smoke. Then, it turned into an egg, just like it had come from earlier. Hansen returned the crystal core and then moved over to pick up the heart wheel that was resting on the sand. God King and the others were all eagerly anticipating the result of the fight. They couldn't watch it unfold, and they did not yet know who had been chosen to challenge the crystal core. All they could do was keep their eyes peeled on the leaderboard. Suddenly, the heart wheel at rank 4 disappeared. The crystal core ranking remained where it was. Everyone was taken aback, for they all knew what it meant. In the conclusion of a Geno core fight, the rank usually remained the same. Good sportsmanship was highly valued, and competitors often had much respect for each other. Death was not a very common occurrence. If the rank had been wiped, though, it meant the owner of the Geno core had been killed. It was not a very good day for those in the top 10. Chapter 1388 Unsealed if someone was killed in a Geno Core fight, that meant one party was far too powerful. 
To kill the air of a super creature so simply, and without fanfare, spoke volumes about the strength of the elusive owner of the crystal core. The babies of a super creature were stronger than their predecessors, and that held true for any species of creature. Still, their self geno cores were still tiered, starting off bronze and in need of reinforcement. The geno core that belonged to Black Mountain God had, despite being bronze, often been compared to the strength of a gold geno core that was usually possessed by a mutant creature. He had accomplished much with his heart wheel, and he had even been known to survive encounters with sacred blood creatures that possessed gemstone geno cores. The fact he had now been vanquished by someone in the same tier as him was frightening. It was almost unheard of. Black Mountain God had been killed unceremoniously, and Sky Lord from Sacred Shelter eagerly wished to find out who had committed this atrocity. Unfortunately for all those who sought vengeance, the only person to have ever seen the person who possessed the Crystal Core was dead. It was a subject that became much discussed in the days ahead. Across the Fourth God's Sanctuary, the topic of the fight and what manner of being could have conjured such a terrifying Geno Core was at the tip of everyone's tongue. There were many guesses, too, of course. Most of them were aimed at presuming the owner of such a Geno Core was either the son of some emperor or the descendant of a berserk super creature. Not even God Lair Luo possessed such fearsome power. Hansen cared little for the gossip, though. And after that nifty trick with the egg, he had become enamored with it. Still, he could never get it to replicate what it had done. He couldn't convince the skeleton to emerge like a bony pygmy from hell. Does it need to be imbued with more power or something? Or does it need to be damaged sufficiently? Hansen stabbed a few guesses. If it did have to be broken, Hansen wasn't willing to break it himself. There was always the possibility the skeleton was growing, and the idea of prematurely awakening it didn't bode well. So, Hansen went off to research the heart wheel that had become encased in ice. The heart wheel was known to be a cruel circular blade. Chapter 1389 Death Demon Dragon. Hansen saw a dragon lady in full sprint, and right on her heels was a terrifying mantis out for her blood. The mantis kept on swinging its sides as it went, in large arcs that hewed the stones and vegetation all around her. Dragon lady did not falter or slow, and she kept on moving as fast as she could, determined to get away. In her hands, she clutched a basketball sized egg that belonged to the mantis she had angered. After a brief stare with his Dong Shan aura, Hansen was able to tell it was a sacred blood creature. No small foe for Dragon Lady to consider taking on by herself. Fortunately, the Manus was a large, lumbering, and blusterous creature. It wavered from side to side as it went, trying to catch its prey that was swift of foot and as nimble as a squirrel. It was having great difficulty catching Dragon Lady, but even so, she was unable to completely escape its pursuit. And it'd only be a matter of time before the chef got winded or made a slip. She used the geography as best she could to throw off the side beast, but still, she couldn't shake the persistent Manus. Hansen didn't think there was much he could do to help her out. The Manus was a sacred blood creature, after all, and even he had his limits. And even though Hansen could not see what Geno Core it utilized, one thing was certain, it was a gemstone Geno Core. And trying to topple one of those was a reckless endeavor with his current status. Get rid of the egg. Throw it away. Hansen yelled at Dragon Lady. The blades of the mantis had just sliced through an entire rocky outcrop, and the land tumbled and shook. Hansen wasn't going to step any closer. The sprinting chef wasn't following his command, though. She responded, I can't do that. It's only a sacred blood egg. Live to fight another day, jeez. It's not worth it. Just get rid of it. Hansen wished to save her, but if she did not listen, there was little he could do. Even if Hansen threw his crystal core at the rampaging insect, it had an effective radius of two meters. It wouldn't be enough to soften and rubberize the entire thing. And that was assuming it could. It was a mighty thing, even by sacred blood standards. There was no guarantee his crystal core would soften it enough to be worthwhile. Hansen looked at Red Pony and Star Sea Beast and noticed how small and harmless they looked. Dragon Lady ran beneath the eaves of a nearby forest and kept on running into the dense landscape of trees. Still, it did not hinder her pursuer much. The mantis marched through the trees, slicing them down as it went. Any it missed were soon toppled by the weight of its body. I needed to get myself a gold Geno core. Dragon Lady explained the reasoning for her risky venture as she hopped across the overgrowth. 
there'll be plenty of opportunities for one in the future. It's not worth what you're putting yourself through. What's the point of getting one if you end up too dead to use it? Hansen could understand her plea and desire, but he felt frustrated at his inability to aid her. But I've been here for so long, and I only just summoned this death demon dragon. I'm not sure when I'll be able to do it again, dragon lady said. SH asterisk T. You summoned that thing? It looks more like a manis than a dragon, but still, whoa. Hansen then recalled her special ability. It was possible for her to summon ingredients to cook with. This time, however, her ingredient was getting the better of her. It should have been the other way around, but now, the ingredient was about to gobble up the chef. It was nearly poetic. Ping. Dragon Lady made a misstep, and she stumbled and tripped over a tree that had been knocked down by the monster that hounded her. The death demon dragon arrived before her to take advantage of her mistake. It raised up its ghastly blades, ready to bring them down and put her to rest in a deep crater. Hansen, realizing he had no choice, summoned his crystal core and lobbed the egg at the blades that were ready to descend. The egg bounced off the glistening steel of its weapons, and then, the metallic cutters turned moderately flaccid. Dragon Lady pulled out some cutlery and blocked the softened steel with a knife and fork. Ping. The knife and fork held back the blades, but there was still a steady force descending onto her. Slowly, she was pushed back into the plush soil of the forest floor until a trench had formed. Dragon Lady spat out some blood as she repelled the cutters. It had taken the wind out of her and dealt her a good deal of damage, but she knew she had survived due to the action of the egg. The area the egg had hit had been softened. The death demon dragon was unable to kill her with its first strike, so it tried to do it again. Once more, it raised its lethal butcherware. You two? Head on home. I've got something that needs doing, but I won't be too far behind. Hansen told Red Pony and Star Sea Beast to return to the shelter. Then, he took aim and launched the egg at the Manisai with the precision and force of a cannon. Ping. The crystal egg battered the eye of the Manis with perfect accuracy, throwing the creature off stance and making it miss the death blow it sought to deliver. Run. Hansen said, after retrieving the crystal core. Dragon Lady, holding her own egg, took off running. She was quick but her speed had obviously been impeded somewhat by the hit she had just suffered. The mantis looked at Hansen, peeved about the intruder that had hassled it a second time, but still continued going after Dragon Lady. Seeing her run so slowly, Hansen had no choice but to take the egg off her hands. He shouted, Give me the egg. Dragon Lady threw it to Hansen and then leaped out of harm's way. The blades of the mantis were just about to descend on her head, but it was fortunate she made the jump. They cut into the earth and kicked up a plume of soil, twigs, and branches. Hansen, egg in hand, then taunted the beast. He said, Now, only one question remains, Manus boy. Fried or scrambled? The rage of the Mantis had been stoked even more, and it began stopping over to Hansen, blades waving from left to right, decimating the landscape between the two. Hansen's body was weaker than Dragon Lady's, but he had his Phoenix techniques to dodge. Unfortunately, getting rid of the man is for good didn't seem possible right now. But at the very least, he was able to remain alive. Hansen kept on running, with his graceful evasions making it look like a spectacular dance. The cutters of the man is shredded the ground like a violent wake Hansen was leaving behind. The man is size was fortunate, for again, its huge and lumbering body made it difficult to catch such small and spry prey. But then, the man is suddenly stopped giving chase. And from out of the mantis's forehead, something appeared. Chapter 1390 Living is Important. Hansen noticed it was a mini me of the death demon dragon, an exact, but smaller version of the creature. It was three meters long and purple in color. It was still rather large, but that was just a testament to how big the Papa Mantis really was. Buzz. The carbon copy of the death demon dragon teleported in front of Hans Senator. It was too quick for Hansen to react, register, or dodge. Dong. Hansen used his bulwark umbrella to shield himself and deflect the incoming slice of the Mantis's cutter. Unfortunately, the power was too much to bear, and he lost his grip on the umbrella. The sheer magnitude of that force was so great, it sent him flying through the air. His descent was met with a loud thud and the subsequent toppling of many trees. When he finally reached the ground, regaining his breath was a struggle, and a violent cough broke out one that flecked the leaves in front of him with blood. It really is a gemstone genocore, and what's more, 
It's a replica of itself. Hansen was surprised, but horror and shock hastily replaced the emotion due to what his eyes saw when they came back into focus. The miniature manis was already on him, cutters raised, ready to bring them down and finish him off. Hansen's muscles trembled in the speed of his reflex reaction, but despite that, it wouldn't be in time. He had made a mistake, and the horrid manis was ready to slay him. D asterisk him in you. Hansen lifted the egg up and pushed it to meet with the blades. The death demon dragon's blades were quite surprisingly to them both, stopped dead in their tracks. The force must have been deflected back into the mantis, for it ended up staggering backwards. Hansen thought the gemstone Geno core was too much for him to deal with, in his current status. He had gotten in too deep, and the mantis's recovery was far faster than expected. It was quicker than its owner, and ready to return to Hansen in another bid to slay him. Hansen started running, though. There were only two options, fight or run, and he knew for sure he couldn't fight it. The Geno core came up behind him, tearing up the dirt in an attempt to shred the legs from his body. It had taken notice of how effective Han Sen's egg was, and the man has clearly wished to mitigate the possibility the fleeing human might use it again. As such, it aimed for his legs. Once Han Sen was rendered footless and unable to flee, there would be little he could do to assert his own survival. But then, Hansen jumped and threw the stolen egg back to Dragon Lady and said, I can't keep this up. You have to return it. No. The Lady Chef continued to move as swiftly as her legs could carry her, and for now, the Death Demon Dragon and its Geno core were back on her tail. Lady Dragon knew she could not fight them or keep up a pace that would eventually leave them behind, so she lobbed the egg back to Hans Sr. What? I don't have what it takes, either. You're the one who dragged me into this but I'm not going to take the fall. Hiya. As soon as the egg landed in his hands, the Geno core was nipping at his bomb. Swiftly, he threw it back again. They were now playing a game of pass, which went on for a while. It eventually came to an end when the frenzied Geno core managed to catch the egg in between their passes. Sweet. It has now been returned to its rightful owner. How about we run away and get to safety? Hansen said, following an injection of much-needed relief. Dragon Lady knew she'd be unable to get it back now, as much as she would have liked to. So, she simply decided to follow Han Sr. But the relief and prospect of survival were short-lived. After the egg was returned to the Geno Corps' owner, it resumed its pursuit. It didn't seem as if it was willing to let them go. I already gave you what you wanted. Jeez, what more do you want from us? Hansen knew a lot about anger and the desire for revenge. He was surprised to see the man has come back for them but he knew he shouldn't have been. He wasn't one to let transgressions go, either. Whatever the case, things had gone awry. Hansen was in a worse condition than he had been in a long time. During his time in the Fourth God Sanctuary, the danger coming for him had been steadily escalating. And now, the latest threat was the worst yet. He genuinely did not know if he could make it out alive. Seeing the Geno core right behind them, Hansen summoned his gold dragon lock to see if it could tie the mantis up and put an end to its pursuit. The mantis Geno core tripped and fell to the ground as soon as the rope came upon it. But it didn't last long. The entire body and carapace of the mantis began to swell and expand in size, as if it was inflating. The rope was useless to resist this, and it looked as if it was on the verge of snapping. Run! Hansen shouted, continuing the stamina depleting chase. The mantis truly was too much of a threat and not even his gold Geno core was going to even the odds. Dragon Lady kept up with Hansen, and she saw too how the rope was not going to last. Previously, its cords were three fingers thick, but now, they were only one finger thick. It had been stretched too much. Hansen recalled the Geno core, not wanting to see it break in vain like that. But when it was free of the Geno core, the Manus resumed the chase. There was only one difference now, and that was the fact that Hansen didn't have a plan. There was no solution he could think of. Go. I really should clean up my own mess. Dragon Lady stopped and did not even wait for a reply. She turned around, grabbed her utensil weaponry, and ran towards the rampaging Geno Core. Dong. Her cutlery was shattered in an instant, and her Geno Core was destroyed. She was sent barreling through the canopy of the forest as blood oozed from the mouth. Hansen didn't think she'd last much longer and it pained him to see her submit to such a fate. Her Geno core had been destroyed, and there was a gaping hole in her chest. Did you link your Geno core to the shelter? Hansen asked. 
Dragon Lady did not answer this, and she just said, Don't let this sacrifice be fruitless. Go now, before it is too late. Seeing the Gino core advance on the chef again, Hansen threw his lock at it once more and said, No, you have every chance of surviving. We're in this together now, so don't give up and throw away your life so easily. It's a shame to die before one can get married. Hansen said a lot more things to try and convince her, but the Gino core would soon to break free and recommit to slaughtering the two. And soon after, the real body of the mantis arrived before them. Its towering height put Hansen and Dragon Lady in shadow.